back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came to quit, uh Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 More Than 92 podcast where we always keep it 100 with you. I am Harrison, and today I am joined by the highly talented Miss Triple Play Sweet. <laughs> Appreciate you for joining the show. So uh, you have a highly anticipated project coming, high class come out May 16th, and we appreciate you stopping to the show to come talk with us, chit chat with us before you go ahead and uh, drop this great project, which I'm excited to hear. So before we go ahead and do all that, um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself to everybody. Oh, sure, definitely. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, but yes, I am Triple Play Squeak. I am a Tennessee artist originally from Memphis, but I've been in Nashville for a very long time. So I'm just putting on for the whole Tennessee at this point. Um, Monday, May 16th is actually just a single that's dropping. The actual whole EP is going to drop at a later date. But yes, it is called High Class. Um, and I'm definitely so excited and anxious to share that with everybody. I've been working on this for a really long time. Shot a great visual for it. So, yes, I'm definitely ready to introduce that. And let's get it going for the summer. How far are you from the actual, like, completion of an album or mixtape? So, it's done. I'm just not dropping it as a full project first. Um, I want to drop it as singles first. And then I'm actually going to drop it as a project afterwards. Okay. How long? Is this your first full, like, album album? Or No, no. Um, I actually dropped... A full album like back in 2019, I want to say it's called The Beast and the Beauty. So this is like my second like full project like that. Okay, because I did see you on Earth to Mars project. It seemed like it was a collaboration of a bunch of people. I didn't know if you had already um, dropped something prior of solo or if it was just a collaboration with other people. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah, I have a ton of, I have a lot of music out really. I got a lot of singles out. Uh, like a couple EPs. I got that last project I dropped. So I got, I have like a lot of music that's already out. Got you. How many songs do you say you've got on deck already recorded? Recorded or out? Recorded. Man, it's a lot of songs. Like probably like hundreds. Okay. The grind doesn't stop. So um, we want to give everybody some background. So uh, if you want to tell everybody, I guess, well, actually, I can ask it. So what made you make the switch instead of signing, going like the Memphis route? What made you go the Nashville route? Well, because I moved here when I was a kid, so I didn't have okay. a choice. You know, gotcha. I didn't have a okay. choice but to move. But, um, you know, I always went back home a lot. The, the older I got, though, the less I stopped, like, I slowed down on going back home. Only because, like, really, uh, initially, I stopped going back so much because I had started getting in, like, a lot of trouble. So my folks was like, nah. You need to find you something to do in Nashville. So that's when I just like start, I start working here and, you know, just all kind of different stuff. But I've always like went back home and tapped in. Um, my core base, you know, fan base is here in Nashville. Um, but, you know, I always get that love and everything back home as well. Okay. So that, that makes more sense because I was like, Memphis is really jumping right now. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, I'm I'm not upset, you know, with you aligning yourself with Nashville, of course, because No, I'm not upset. I'm not. Memphis is popping right now. So you're right about that. Yeah, I think um yeah, it, like I said, I seen the Nashville scene and it had uh were you on that cover? No. Mm -mm. Okay, so I seen the Nashville scene. I know it's got some local artists. Um, it didn't have Mike Floss on there, but it had Chuck yeah. Indigo and some other people. So yeah. um, I think somebody asked me this the other day about Nashville and Memphis, and we were talking about who's done more. Was it Young Buck or was it Gotti? And I was saying it's clearly Gotti from that standpoint. Right. It's it's hard because we only have uh, Lido, yeah, and we also have Young Buck. But um, I think Don Tripp is from uh, Nashville too. Um, He's from he, Memphis. He is okay. I, I always get the places where he's from confused, but other than that, it's just them two, yeah. and we don't really pop like that. So it's yeah. it's yeah, you want to rep Memphis, but you're not from Memphis. So I finally feel like you know, hopefully this can be like art because I feel personally Buck let Nashville down, which is why he doesn't get praise in Nashville. Like yeah, you kind of went to G Unit and then you went up to uh, New. It kind of made yourself New York famous with them, but you kind of let everybody go. And then Lito can rap, but I feel like he hasn't been able to put himself in a position that Gotti, Dolph, you know, uh, three, six, or anybody that Memphis has, whether even though, and as you see now, they got a plethora yeah. of 
artists that come out of there. So hopefully this is kind of like um, our arrival, as you could say. But yeah. um, what are some of your musical inspirations? Um, really, as far as like inspirations, I always tell like my favorite artists. Well, my number one favorite rapper is uh, Scarface um, from Houston. And that's because I grew up on a lot of like face. Like I, I always been like a daddy's girl and I come up in like a two parent household. Like my parents are still married. So like um, I always used to be with my daddy all the time. and We listen to like a lot of Scarface. So he's like really my biggest influence. And that's really because he's real. Um, like when I listen to music and when I make music, like I'm rapping. You know what I mean? Like I don't care about a lot of the stuff that's going on nowadays where they just like, you know, it's the hype. It's the beat. Like, you know what I mean? Like I don't really care about that because you're not really talking about nothing in your song. It's not rapping. you just doing something. So I always... I always tell myself and I'm always big on like making sense. Like I'm real big on bars. You know what I mean? Like, so I just like real music that means something and make you feel something like it's relatable. When did, what was your first start? Like when did, what age were you? Or what happened to you to make you feel like, yo, I want to do this shit. Man, I wrote my first rap when I was four years old. Okay. And ever Still since remember then, it? No, I told myself that I was, it, I remembered it for so long. And I told myself that I was never going to forget it, but I forgot it. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, like, I remember, like, writing raps from, and, like, in class in, like, the fourth grade. Now I remember some of those, but, like, nine, ten years old, like, I was just rapping. Like, I always been rapping. And, um, my first time recording, I was, like, the first time I went to the studio, I want to say I was, like, 14. Um, and then, like, I got, like, real serious about like okay this is what i really want to do i want to say like 2016 maybe mm -hmm. so yeah like 2016 i think that's when i got like super serious about it okay so yeah uh, what school did you go to i went to a lot of schools i graduated from hillsboro though but i went to i went to a couple high schools uh, okay which so hillsboro the one you claim though I claim Weiss Creek. I claim Hillsboro too because I graduated from there, but Weiss Creek is my favorite school. I what year did you graduate? 14. Oh, okay, so I was about to say you weren't there when my partners was there. But uh yeah, they they look older than that. But Weiss okay. Creek is big. <laughs> okay. So um what was I know you said you started performing. Have you ever like battled anybody or would you consider yourself like a battle? I know you said you want rhymes and stuff, but were you more of a uh like crit type or were you more like a battle rapper type like meek style or you just kind of knew that you could put pen to paper yeah. and make okay so yeah. it wasn't it wasn't none of them like uh coop off of all american i don't know i've never this. seen that show so i don't know but no i ain't never been into like battle rap and stuff like that at all like i listen to it you know i watch it but i never like got into like battle rapping and i'm a i'm a performing artist Okay. Um, yeah. What were some of your musical inspirations as far as early on female wise? I know you said so, Scar. Female wise, I came up on a lot of Trina, um, mm -hmm. like in my earlier years, and then like teenage years that it was Nicki Minaj, um, of course. So, I mean, they really the 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 thing about the both of them that great artists and Nicki Minaj, like you said, she did both. Like she gonna give you a, a bomb look. She bad. She pretty. She fire but her flow sick like nobody seeing nikki you feel what i'm saying so like i i just feel like i mean like female influence wise those two um and then a lot of people always compare me to mia x like they like you remind me of mia x so much like so i i kind of feel like she's in there too um got definitely got a lot of respect for her as well but like coming up growing up listening who i'm listening to definitely trina and nikki minaj for sure you feel like um your style fits this era. A lot of the people you said were kind of older. So do you yeah. feel like um, you rap more of what's in style with the current generation? Or do you feel like you maybe have a kind of nostalgic flow to you? I think I got a nostalgic flow, really. And it's, uh, you can feel how pure it is, you know. Um, but of course, one thing about me, I don't put myself in one lane. So I can give you something that's like super fun. Like you can go listen to my music. You're going to hear like 
so many different types of moods. Like, you know, like I can give you some stuff that sounds like today, you know what I mean? But you also gonna hear some stuff that's like, you know what? She remind me of Mia X and she remind me like, you know, like I'm ahead of my time. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. I kind of want to say like all of it really. It really just depends on the song or the mood. Do you feel like it's kind of hard or what has it been? What obstacles, I guess, have you faced being not only from Nashville where they don't take us serious, but a female rapper from Nashville? I mean, really, I really feel I feel like it's the the area. Like one thing, and I was just saying this the other day. Um, one thing about Nashville, like I love Nashville. You know, like I, oh, maybe shit, my shit. veins. I'm so about to, my wow. Veins. So I'm about to come wild. I say I no, love no, Nashville. No, I'm just like, this, about to that's keep like it real. I'm just no disrespect, no disrespect, but some disrespect. Like though. no, ain't no disrespect. I was just real. Like like the problem with a lot of people in Nashville, it's like everybody get like way too cocky. Everybody feel like they better than this person, or they did this, or they did that. They too good for this. But if you look around, nobody's made it. Nobody has made it out of Nashville. Like, nobody's popping. Like you said, Buck, Lido. Of course, you know, you got, like, Jelly Roll. You know, people like that. That's in, like, a different lane. But as far as hip-hop, nobody has blown out of Nashville besides Lido and Buck. So people too cocky. And then not only that, it's the people that the promoters, the DJs, the managers, like, you know, people who just work in, like, that, that the area – who feel like they got the blueprint, but y'all ain't put nobody on the pop. So people yeah. just, I just feel like people are way too cocky. And it's a lot of that, you know, crab in a bucket mentality where people don't want to join together to make something big. They rather, oh, you do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. And, you know, like, it's kind of like an attitude that, that other cities don't have. Like, if you look at Atlanta, of course, everybody always say, you know, Atlanta is a good example because they, you can't beat them, join them. They combine together and they pop. You feel what I'm saying? Like, a, a good example, Memphis, uh, Hit Kid, he he got all the, he got Glorilla, um, K Carbon, Gloss Up, Slimerella. He put all them together on that track. And that track um, set the tone. Great music. He he he's a producer who know how to play the game and he got a group of females who know how to rap, who got a good style, who got a good look. And then now look at them, they popping. They just blew up in a week. So people got to get that mentality out their head. They're like, oh, I'm going to get it all figured out on my own because you don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Two heads is always better than one. And I just feel like people egos are way too big to join together or like you know like oh let's team up and do something you feel what i'm saying we all got this one goal let's all get together on this one goal and, and reach it but nobody want to do that and i feel like that's one of the biggest issues with nashville rap period hip-hop music scene whatever you want to call it because it's it's everybody look at nashville as country music so if you're not really doing country music I don't feel like I could be wrong, but I don't feel like labels are here looking for hip hop artists at all. You feel what I'm saying? I think people don't really realize that people from Nashville do not listen to country. And I big and when I they think I'm playing with this, the biggest segment of that there is one part of country music in Nashville that is Broadway. That is right. You want know man, that is a street. Exactly. So everybody, it is black people, Mexicans. And, and I'm not trying to be like irresponsible by saying that's what they are Mexican, they spent no a Mexican and right. Kurdish people, and then that small little section of rich folks is the white folks, and they all the way in Brentwood or they're in Murfreesboro. Yeah. But Nashville, the not 101.1 to beat is the number one station, 92Q is next, and then 107.5 because that's because they'll play both. But that's but none yeah. of these are country stations, um, right? So I think that, um, I think one thing that plagues Nashville is because nashville does not have the rough exterior like memphis does a lot of people like you know white's creek wasn't the worst school or antioch or any of these places but we had to struggle but i feel like because we aren't desperate or we feel like you know like maybe like you said prideful let's just call it prideful you know um like you said you lose that mixtape hey i need you to listen to this hey i need you to listen we don't have enough but if you ever 
Um, no, I listen to a lot of artists, and one thing they do when they come to cities is they bring whoever is hot in the city. Mm-hmm. Well, they doing a whole scene of plenty of rappers out here, but yet Gotti, all them people come to TSU Homecoming. They don't bring local yeah. rappers up. They bring yeah. somebody else from out the city, and that's just you know, like you were saying, um, we may have that we may have that stigma about ourselves to where um, we don't ask for help, you know. So, um, as a female in the game, though, how what kind of difficulties have you had uh, yourself? Is- I mean, really. I, don't, I wouldn't say I really had no difficulties, really. I mean, anywhere I go, like people always show me love, you know. But one thing, like a cup, like some, like people would be like, try to like downplay your pen, like, like do you really write for yourself? Like, of course, who else gonna talk what I talk? You feel what I'm saying? So like, I don't, I really like when it comes to like difficulties. I don't really have no difficulties though, cause like people love my music, people love my work. And anytime anybody listen to it, they mess with me for me. So I ain't gonna say like I really have no difficulties, but you know, it's just a it's just a thing where like I mean, and it's just anybody you just have that that issue just really just popping like blowing, you know? Yeah. But, I didn't know like I like I said I I seen Lotto was turned to this big thing to where you know niggas would try to get favors or it make it harder or put it like hey she ain't this like you said they, they challenge yeah. you in. so i wanted to get from because i've talked to male rappers and yeah. theirs is maybe just sounding different from what um, side of the out exactly versus females there's a whole avenue like if nikki goes into an office and demands something she looked at as a bitch but if Jay-Z yeah. go in there and do the same thing that's boss talk so you know right. the sexual aspect the gender aspect i wonder if you For uh sure had any difficulties or ran any problems with people clearing or wanting to do songs with you without those types of things i mean nah i wouldn't say that but like when it comes to like like maybe like like shows um or maybe like promoting or working with certain people like like men normally typically try to like favor men like when you know for a fact I rap better than him. Like I probably rap circles and why on everybody in here. But because I'm a female, you're gonna try to downplay that. Or you know, so I have like experience like stuff like that, but I don't pay no attention. I don't let it get to me because you know, I know what's up with me, but I, I know this stuff. I don't I just don't pay no attention. Okay. So um have you uh the shows and I know you perform live. Uh mm-hmm. what's what's some of your what was your first live live experience? First. Like how, yeah. Yes. Mm. I want to say back in 2016, um, I did a show. I want to say what was the name of that club out east? I think it was called Kilimanjaro. I think, I think that was the name of that club. That was my first like. No, I'm lying. My first time performing live, I was 14 in like an adult club in Memphis. Um. <laughs> And I was, and I performed that night. That was actually my first time performing. I was like 14 years old in an adult. Huh? Were Purple Haze? No, no. I actually forgot the name of the club. But I know it was in North Memphis, though. But I forgot the name of the club. But that was my first time performing live, actually. Do you remember, like, the feeling? Did you throw up? Was it nervous? Just like, I know I didn't throw up. I was just like, my adrenaline was, like, rushing, like, so bad, like, I was sweating like I was thirsty. My mouth was dry. Like I, I, yeah, it was an experience for sure. It, and I think I was just so like overly excited and like nervous at the same time because like not only am I this is my first time performing, but I'm a kid. I'm 14 and everybody in here wrong. Like so, I was just like over overly excited, but I was tired. But it was a good it was a good experience though take it till now what's the biggest audience you performed in front of now now i want to say it was when i opened up for lido um back in december 2020 uh down in mobile alabama that was my biggest audience i want to say yeah yeah i'm still i'm still um i'm still a fan of lido i'm still that's my boy yeah i I like i still bump life story i know you're with four uh four entertainment is Mm -hmm. that like a manager or is that a label that's my management. Okay, so are you you not signed to a label at all? No, no. I'm okay, cool. 
cool. That was going to be my question because when yeah. I seen it before, um, I was going to ask you what made you go the, if it was a label, what made you go uh -huh. the label route versus independent? Yeah. Um, but as an independent artist um, who, like I said, I've seen your work, you're you're on the way. So as it coming from there, um, what tips did you get and were you always going to stay independent or is it just for the time being? I mean, it really just depends on the situation. Um, and I tell everybody that I'm not really pressed on signing. Of course, I want like people to know me, you know, notoriety, know my work. But um, a lot of people like rush into situations where they get messed up, you know, because our money ain't good money. So yeah, you, you say fucked over. You say fucked over. It's not. Oh, okay. 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 I ain't know if I can cuss on here or not. But yeah, yeah um, a lot of people, like you said, get fucked over and like money, our money ain't good money. Of course, we want some money, you know. We need we got stuff we trying to do we got people we trying to take care of but you know at the end of the day you got to be able to for one get that money back to the label um and then for two people just you know it's, it's the industry so everybody knows how the music industry is i know how it is before i'm like really even into it and people like everybody don't have your best you know intention so i ain't, i'm not really pressed on getting signed but I mean, like it's some people that I will sign with, but I ain't really tripping on it for real. I just want people to know who I am because the money gonna come, you know, when they come. Yeah. Um. So since, like I said, you you perform with uh, Lido, so you know you're getting yourself out there now. Um. Have you been able to pay it forward to kind of make a lane for other female rappers in Nashville to like uh find their way in? Since you've kind of hit a plateau, are you kind of like helping anybody through or, or are you in the process or thinking about it? I mean, yeah, for sure. Like anytime I have like any opportunities for anybody, male or female, like mm -hmm. able to put them on the, any type of platform or give them any opportunities, I always do that. Like anybody around me or people that I know, like, you know, my management is real good at that too. Like if they see another artist or they know an artist that I mess with. They're like, hey, won't you, you know, invite such and such to do this and that. So I always show a lot of love. Um, and, like, I got a show. I just got booked for the Hot Chicken Festival that's in July. Um, and I'm bringing an artist on stage with me then. It's, it's kind of a different, like, crowd. So you got to be very particular about the music and the artists that you do choose. So, um, but, yeah. White like, crowd. Huh? White crowd. I mean, it's a, it's a hot chicken festival. I'm not going to say it's a white crowd, but it's definitely going to be white people there, you know? Oh, okay. I ain't, I ain't heard of that festival, so I, I was... You never heard of a hot chicken festival? Hell no. I haven't... What? Was, yes, no, I haven't heard it, so I was like, man, they really pressing this hot chicken shit for Nashville, yeah, so I was like, sure. it's got to be a mixed crowd for that. That's been going on for years, and um, it's like, it's right, like, downtown, too, like... Mm -hmm. About a, uh, I think it's the amphitheater. So you know what kind of crowd it's going to be. So you got to be very particular about the people that you choose, you know, because you represent. I mean, I have a brand that I represent. So I might make one type of music. But if you hear me out there at the Hot Chicken Festival, I'm not going to be doing that type of music. I'm going to pull out some different type of music, you know, that's more like, you know, easy on the ears. And that's you know, gospel. everybody can listen to. No, not no gospel. When Jesus walked, when Jesus <laughs> no, walked. not no gospel, not no gospel. Just something. You're not coming. Else. You're not coming in that choir outfit. You not no. You are gonna pass out. I, may. I, I know. Well, I don't know yet because it's May and it's still cold, <laughs> cold as shit outside. It was now. hot today. You must then leave outside. It was hot today. Mm, it's, I'm no. feeling it. Something's here now. Um. <laughs> so, what's the artist name that you were uh, talking about? Just to give up for everybody, so we can keep on the lookout for. It. Uh, Robin Raynell. A lot of people already know Robin, though. Um, that's my not only my like my big sister, but she's like kind of like my mentor in his rap stuff and his music anyway, because she's been I remember like being at high school, going to right White's Creek, listening to Leo and Trash Bag Gang and Robin singing on all their songs. So like me at a point now, like, oh, I'm really like in the studio with her. Like making music with her, we got like three songs together now. One of one of our songs is on a project, um, that high class project. When it does drop, we just dropped a song together for Valentine's Day, um, and she was on the song that I released last year, um, to uh, you know pay homage to my brother when he passed. So we have become like very very close. So um, she's one of those people that's like a household name. She's well respected in Nashville. 
So I just feel like, you know, and she has, she has a, she has versatile music that anybody can listen to. You know, it's not too vulgar. She has a beautiful voice. You literally, when we go to the studio, they don't have to put nothing on her voice. Like no auto tune, none of that crazy stuff. Like she coming there raw vocal. So I just feel like, you know, as somebody that respects her so much and I got so much love for her, you know, I just feel like it's only right that I brought home with me. Well, that is great. Do you sing? No, I did not sing. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you were <laughs> one of those multi-talented, you know, women can rap and sing. So I didn't know if you had a couple no. uh, moment for life type tracks. But uh, so I, can hold, I can hold a little tune to some. I'm working on it, but now I can't sing. If I keep it low, then I'm, I'm telling you. If I can keep I'm it low. You, yeah, you got to keep everybody. Ooh, technically, everybody can sing. You just got to know which, you know. But yeah, my low, as long as I go low, I'd be cool too. <laughs> my little sound boy got like auto tune on it. So I was about to hit, but I was like, that'd be doing too much. So, I, you know, if I want to, <laughs> I want to hit you a buy you a drink, I, I'm telling you, T Pain gonna have a go crazy. Let's Man. hear it. Who, me? Are oh, you want the auto tune? Yeah. Nah, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> <sighs> she gave us drinks to drink. We drunk them. That's all. That's all. <laughs> they, ain't, they ain't paying for that. They ain't put me on those shows Ooh, yet. You know. You're funny, man. That's all. So um, I do know one thing that um, a lot of, well, at least from female standpoint, um, I think y'all kind of going in the direction of comedy for when it's black people. It can only be one black comedian at a time. Well, I, I've noticed with women, um, they try to put y'all on a lot of unnecessary beefs, like uh. Anybody that comes out, y'all just can't be vibing. You don't want to jump on the track. You know, it's got to be this person against this person and this person against that person. And then it's a guys. Exactly. No guys. You got to really have beef with them. But guy, like, you know, I think I seen one with uh, um, Amaretta and uh, Lotto or somebody, whoever, whoever wasn't from Atlanta, you know, they wanted every, and I feel like y'all get a discredit. Yeah. For um, has has anybody told you? Has anybody kind of went that direction with you, or how do you? And also, how do you avoid that and keep up positivity between Black female rappers? Oh, uh, really? I just show a lot of love, and like I said, I don't get into all the old cattiness, you know. Um, and yeah, I don't really get into that. No, I I ain't gonna say that nobody has tried to do it. Did I give it my energy? No. They give my attention no, because at the end of the day, females gonna be females, and really females just just want to be your friend. But yeah. <laughs> that's just it. Just like, keep an eye. Yeah. But no, I just know. Yeah. I don't really get off into all that, but if somebody was to try to put me in that predicament, I just wouldn't give it my energy. My temper okay. is very very short, and I have come a long way to go back down that road. Put that blade up. Mm. Okay, raising all that. <laughs> Vaseline, Vaseline has been retired. If you go to your crib, it's a it's a wall of I wish a bitch would and all gold gold <laughs> letter entertainment. And it's like there go my razor from the fourth grade. There go my Vaseline. A lot of, a lot of scars saved from that, that one. Fourth grade, you funny. Ooh, look at that barrettes in my hair. You tie them back because they will snatch them. But um, for real. So um I know um do you have the I don't I don't know if you said it earlier, but do you have the name of your upcoming track? Um, I'm not track, not track, not track, not track, not track. Album. High class. It's called album. high class. Oh, yeah. so the, okay. So the whole album will be called high class? Yes. I got you. So <clears throat> have you um toured outside of Nashville? Um any cities? Yeah, um, I went on like a couple tours actually. I went on tour with the first two I went on was actually with Red Dot. I went with Red Dot. We went to like Memphis, Cookville. It was a different, it was a couple different cities in, in, in Tennessee. Um, and then like I've done like a couple shows in Atlanta. I had moved out there like temporarily last year. So I did like a, a for the short period of time I stayed out there, I like had a nice buzz going and I did ton of shows out there. Even before I moved out there though, like I performed at what is it called? A three C. I performed out there. Um, I've done a couple shows down in Mobile, Biloxi, um, Black Beach, all that good stuff. So I've I've done a couple shows out of you know out of Tennessee. Not as many as I like, but it's on the way. So I have um I have 
uh, I know you said you work with. Uh, did you already name the people that you work with in Tennessee as far as collaborations, other tracks that we could look out for you for? I know I said the uh, Earth to Mars one project because that was the one I I see your name. Oh, on. okay, okay. But yeah, that's, um, that's actually my cousin Marty Mar. Um, okay. But why they got him on? Why they got him on all the mixtape, but they ain't got like your other stuff on there. For just you, because you know you said you had a bunch from between them. Where 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 are you looking at? I seen them on that mix. That piff is when I where I, I found his at. That hmm. song, yeah. That's you don't like the whole. You don't like the whole mixtape. Huh. So I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna check my mixtape and all that. But like I said, when I was looking, I was like, okay, well here's from there. And then I was just kind of listening to the tracks, yeah. other than the ones from you know the the clips I seen from a uh, high class. But yeah, um, hmm. that's interesting. Well. I know for a fact, I'm going to check into that, but I know for a fact, like, all my music is Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, always. Um, but I'm going to definitely take a look at it because that, that's weird. But, um, yeah, I got a, I got a couple songs out. I did, uh, on my last project, I had a song with Trevor Mendel. Shout out to him. That's my boy. Um, of course, like I said, the Robin Ray Nails. Um, and then I've done, like, a couple features like around the city a couple features in memphis so it's a and now i got a ton of stuff that's coming too like i have so much music that i've just recorded that i've not dropped or anything yet you know and i got a few i got a few features with like big artists but yeah i got a lot of stuff coming i'm gonna tell you why because i i looked at how you spell your name i'm gonna tell you why you didn't pop up on my app you spelled it wrong no i spelled it right but i spaced each word out I didn't know triple play was more words. So if you space them out and if you put them all as each three different words, you're not going to come up with that. So that's why I ended up having to go to the mixtape. Okay. But like you got down the ride, weak ass yeah. bitch. Mm -hmm. um, well, that ain't you. I was about to say, that's Usher. But uh, I was wondering, I was like, let me, I look how you, I look how you <laughs> spelt it on here. I look how you spelt it on here. And I was like, oh, I've been spelling it with the space. So, okay. Yeah. So, triple play is a compound name. <laughs> where did you come up with that name? Oh, my father, actually. My daddy gave me my real name. He gave me all my nicknames. Um, and my daddy just named me that. Like, he just like, you're a hustler. So he just started calling me Triple Play. And I'm like, you know what? I like that. So I put that on the front of Squeak. Hey, there we go. We got a name. You're the only child? Nope. I'm the youngest of eight. Oh, okay. So um, I was going to ask you, uh, probably answer this one. Um, what was your motivation or inspiration to kind of keep you from falling into the traps of, like you said, Nashville rappers? Like, who has been, like, your biggest support system? My family, for sure. My family and, like, you know, my management team. Um, and, of course, my fans, man. Like, even when I take time off, like, last year, that was the most time I ever took off. And it was because I was grieving my brother. Um, but, like, I took – I was, like, quiet last year. But when I came – and I dropped that weak ass bitch. It's like I never went anywhere. Like they still, they still love me. They still share it. They still listen. Like weak ass bitch is still like one of my. Well, it is still my most like stream song. Yeah. yeah, most streamed song right now. Like the video went crazy. Like on all sites, TikTok, all that. So like my fans really keep me going. Like you know what? You took some time off. We understand. Like. And I, and I and I love them for that. So, but yeah, my family really they keep me going, man. They keep me going. So in today's time, a lot of songs don't have to be good. Right. They just have to be trendy. You know, right. whether you can make a dance to it, um, Tootsie Slide, for example. Uh, you. Oh, uh, I love that gotta, song. Oh, I, trust me. I, I you hear the intro. I don't know if you heard the intro for the song. So it's Aubrey all day. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I had to take a break when we he reconciled with Kanye because I wasn't feeling that. <laughs> but um then he went by his first name so and that was he said he went by his first name yeah i changed i changed the song i changed the intro for like two weeks straight out of out of pure disdain i'm like man you you got me you got me ready to go to war for you over this nigga and because one person come out here and tell you to end the beef you out here shaking hands with him now i done threw away all my cds i need my graduation uh stuff back you know you are but, extra very but um so for you like how do you I've always wanted to ask this. Um, how do you like, I guess, how do you determine a hit and do you try to do things based off the climate or do you just kind of tell yourself because you can actually write raps to just kind of stick to what you're doing and um, if it's going to hit, it's going to hit. Like, how do you avoid the, that lining of it? 
I mean, really, uh, really, it's like if it's hit, if it's gonna hit, it's gonna hit. Um, but at the same time, it's like a mixture of all that, right? Because you want something catchy, but you want to have those bars in there too, and you want to have something beat. It's a beat that's like you know a good beat that catches your attention. So it's really like a mix of all of it. Um, I do pay attention to like things that like bigger artists do, like the syntax of their verses and stuff. Like I look at some of that stuff too, like and pay attention to like, okay, what's because you have to stay caring. You have to be able to keep up with the time and like pay attention to what's going on. So I do I do pay attention for sure. For sure. And all that plays a part in like my music as well. Um, does it get discouraging sometimes when you know you're putting out fire and then you get some bullshit out here honestly like does it like how like what is your motivation honestly when you know that you got you got heat in the chamber and then you see um you see watch me whip and watch me nene take over like all the 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 ways of songs in that genre like what it how, how do you keep yourself motivated when you hear doo-doo out here he said when you hear doo-doo um i really just think about like the longevity you know mm -hmm. because i can really I can really rap so when i do pop i'll be one of those artists that lasts you know what i mean like i'm having a nice long run i'm always be respected people are gonna always listen to my music versus some of the bull stuff that people put out we over it in a couple months like i don't want to hear that no more like you ain't even like you're a one hit wonder you ain't even gonna come out with another song type of deal so i really just 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 keep my eye on the prize and i stay prayed up like Okay. I'm real, real, real heavy with God. So I know do he you, got me at the end of the day. Do you have to kind of watch what you or how you were critique how, how you would critique it just because you know like this person may be hot, you may want to do something for yourself, or do you just kind of like if you don't like something, you're gonna say it? Like I, I've always wondered also, do you have to tip the toe and like man, this is some bullshit, but then you walk up like hey brother, you know, like just just do some just kind of I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I keep it real at all times, but you know, I'm not gonna never like, like you said, like you never know what a pop, you never know who somebody would be. So you know, like it's hard. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of like um, I was, I had like something, but I thought about. It. I was like, well, don't want to speak on certain niggas that's going through trials, <laughs> young thug. You know, uh, don't want to go through because you don't never know. You know. I feel like it's kind of weird like you can't really give your opinion on certain things i've talked to people who do like television like you don't want to say something about somebody because then it can affect you yeah in the long run here. so i feel like that's kind of like shackles i don't know if i um i don't know if i would like that portion i wouldn't call it shackles it's just like being aware of what you say really yeah you know and then just being just being like intentional about everything you say too because you don't really want to hurt nobody's feelings and then too so no, I understand. So some what are some things that people don't know about Squeak? You know, like what's uh what are some of your hobbies? What do you like to do other than, you know, write bars, uh mom spaghetti, you know, Clarence and them all that type shit from eight mile. What are some of the things that people would not probably know about you that you would, um you know, you one of my one, let me see, what do I like to do? I like to shop. Okay. So uh, I love to still, cook. still a still a woman. Okay. Yeah, that I, love day, I love to Can travel. Cook, though? Can you cook though? I can you can cook. I can cook. All right. What's your top three meals? Like, if you don't, mm -hmm. don't suggest it. Okay. So, I'm going to say, because I just cooked this last night. The whole house loved it. Last night, I made like some, um, I had steak and I chopped up the steak. Mm -hmm. And I had like potatoes with the cheese on it and some corn on the cob. You know, everything went in the oven. So, that one, um, my fried chicken, everybody love my fried chicken. Fat. Okay. Um, and then let me see. I can't. I can really. I make this dish called the Santa Fe dish. It's like chicken with like black beans and corn and cilantro and cheese. That's one of my favorite dishes to cook, and that's like super bomb too. Yeah. You gonna enter your? You gonna enter your chicken in the hot chicken festival or? No. I don't make oh. hot chicken. I make fried chicken. <laughs> now, the people that said your steak meal, did they happen to live in the house that they were eating from? No. Okay, I'm just making sure because niggas ain't going to say they something nasty. Yeah, yes, they will. Yes, I'm they saying, will. you know, they got to survive or they got to stay there. You know what I'm saying? Mm, but uh -uh. okay. Uh -uh. okay. Uh -uh. People, my people tell me, too, you should light up on the salt. 
You should have put this a little longer. My people don't care. That's it. Well, I just got it because you know some people be like, oh, I could cook, and then they give you nacho. I mean, they give you hamburger meat over um Doritos and act like um that's that's tacos so you know i can cook myself i just can't bake but i could throw down like it's it's nothing out there just you know chef yeah. boy chef boy R. james out here that so you it. so you said you like to travel what's some of the place what's your favorite place you've been and what's uh some of the places you still want to try to go I uh my favorite place i've been i love california um my birthday is in january and i went look at you i went um I went to Cali. I went on vacation for like two weeks um, from LA to San Diego. Um, so that, that was my most favorite trip. San Diego was probably my favorite. And then um, where I want to go, I have not been out the country yet. Um, I got my passport finally. It came in the mail. Like as soon as I came off vacation for my birthday, my passport was at home in the mail. So I want to go like on my, on my list is Greece, um, Dubai, and Jamaica. I'm trying to make it to Jamaica this year. Jamaica's but. cool. Haven't been to Greece. Um, I'm not going to Dubai for the reasons how I see a lot of people get there. Ain't nobody about to do nothing weird to me to go to Dubai. Oh, so I may go to Dubai in a couple years, but um, yeah. but yeah, I think uh, you'll definitely like Jamaica. So, um, are you in the sports or anything? Um, I like to watch them. Yeah. So not really. Them. So not really. I do like watching sports. I used to play basketball in um, middle school. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you watching basketball now? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to need you to send a message to Ja. If he needs me to come out there, my 2K player is 99. So I'm, I can play in real life. I'm just happen to be, I'm on, I'm over six feet, like six, two, six, three, <laughs> but I ain't Jaron Jackson and none of them. Like, you know, I'm, I got you. I'm just I'm civilian. so mad that he's hurt. I'm so mad me John's too. hurt. Me too. So I did want to play a game with you. I know you also you named a bunch of dope artists from the past. So I'm pretty sure these people will get from you. I was gonna do like my own verses, all right. And I need you to tell me in your opinion who would win out of all these. Okay. okay. So for the first one, we got the Hot Boys, Cash Money, and uh versus um Young Money, Wayne, Nicki, and your verses. Cause young you are money. young money over cash money bling bling okay i thought you was gonna go to the right okay so we got no limit versus cash money who you going with your verses cash money okay uh you already know he's off rip we got bad boy versus rockefeller rockefeller okay throw up the rock get that shit out of there all right so now <laughs> you know, for the the women we got Lil Kim versus Trina. There we go. Lil Kim. Okay. Lil Kim versus Nikki. Nikki. Okay. Oh, you said Nikki? Mm -hmm. Okay, you caught me with that. Okay, Barb, I see you. Okay. So we got Meg the Stallion versus City Girl. That's a good one. Mm. Meg. I'm gonna go with Meg. Okay. You you like you prefer the bars over the turn up? I would have went I'm, the other I'm one. not basing this off of my preference. I'm oh. basing this off of hits. No, like you supposed to be to... having more hits and shit. This is this is your preference. We we ain't worried um, about the hits. See, see now we got well, no, no, I'm talking about this last one. When I said oh, okay. City Girls, maybe we're oh, okay. Dang. That's hard then, man, because I love both of them. Um, I so love both of them. About a nigga. Big Birkin bag. I'm gonna go with City Girls. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna go with City Snap Girls. Snap up for him. Okay. So we got uh Lotto versus Meg. You get me, man. Hey man. Cause I He's love all of them. I mm. love all of them. Uh who do I listen to more? Damn, I'm gonna go with Meg okay okay so we got it all here from there so uh high class comes out which is a single off the album which is going to be the same name high class mm -hmm. what kind of song is that give people a walk down because from what it looks like you know it looks like uh your version of big old freak except you know just from the aesthetics mm, okay so um, but don't describe it for people so high class is like a like a, a hood classy type of ordeal right um, it's really just like welcoming you to like my world, like who I really am. Like, 
a lot of people, like a lot of my friends, they're like, you the most ghetto, bougiest bitch I know. So high class is like, like who is Triple Play Squeak? Like she's this high class, she's this hood, like ratchet gangster woman, but she's super classy with it type, type of thing. So it's like, I'm giving you that vibe, but I'm also like popping my shit when it comes to like saying what kind of man I, I want or kind of what kind of man me and I deal with type of thing. So um, it's a different type of B. It's like a I want to say it's like a female Ross type of type of feel, but it's like upbeat. I don't know, but it's fun at the same time. Yeah. I know there was a lot, but like I think you can just get a lot of feeling from it. I don't know. <laughs> um, are you in a relationship right now or seeing? Yes. Okay. Um, how is it dealing with somebody in the eye of rap? Because you know, um, relationships aren't popular, or just from like I said, from the high class video. Yeah. You know, how how does how does that person handle? Or when you make this, do you when you make music, do you have him in mind when you're making? it? Yeah, for sure. All the time. Well, I ain't gonna say all the time, because sometimes I just be talking shit or like I'll talk shit about something I've dealt with in like the past or something. But um he's he's very supportive. Um he want me to win. When I win, he win. Um he, he's really supportive. He's he's been here with me through a lot of this and he's seen my growth. We've been through we've we've been together for like seven years. Um okay. so like he's he's like and even before that, he was just like my best friend. So we grew up together, really. Um, but he's adjusting to it. Um, he's adjusting. You know, sometimes he's a little little over the top when I got like guys in a video and stuff. But he's. Hey, nigga. Hey, hey, hey. She good. All right. She good. Huh? Yeah, put, your no. fucking, put your fucking clothes on. All right. Huh? <laughs> fuck, is you, fuck is you out here with baby oil chest on? You said these niggas was going to be in full blankets. Just, that's like that's him that's him for sure uh, but um no he, he's 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 very supportive though and that's one of the it's really the biggest thing i need from him is just to be supportive like that but yeah it's real good so do y'all have an agreement if he gonna support this you gotta have ugly niggas in your video no because i'm not gonna have no ugly niggas in my video oh okay so i'll <laughs> just be like i'd be like look you need welvins up in here okay i need <laughs> i need i need christopher you reed niggas down. pulling in chairs you know what I'm saying? I need I need a motherfucker with a hunchback. All right. Going down. Uh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Have y'all? Uh. Has it? I guess y'all have already talked about this. Um. Going forward, but I mean that is pretty. That is pretty cool. I I I, I would ask him personally, my nigga. How do you do it? Just okay. from you have to uh turn that side off to like. And I only mean turn that side off. Just imagine, like, you know, because people are coming here. And um, will you always let it be known? Or is it kind of like you'll go into the squeak character and then in your real life, you know what it is? Because if you, you know, I've always wondered that. Do you, when you out there, do you, since you're a performer, do you play the squeak role? But like, squeak ain't got nobody. But, you know, in reality, this person do, but the triple play ain't got nothing. It really just depends on what mood I'm in. I got you. It depends on what mood I'm in, but I'm always gonna carry myself like as a taken woman. But like as a performer, I'm a performer. I got you. Yeah, I got you. He uh, he he um, how was he about your attire? Hmm. Do you say you can go out there like Meg on the stage, or is that just something he'd be like, "Look, girl, do what you do." Uh, no, he, he's gonna he's gonna do the most. He's gonna do the most if I'm showing too much. He's crazy. Oh, okay. He's gonna do the most. He want me just like a nun. Oh, okay. Like, girl, <laughs> you, why is your eyes showing? Gonna cover them? You supposed to be looking like you supposed to be looking like somebody um off of GI Joe's exactly snake eyes or something. Okay, so um, what are your goals for this year? Um, this year, year is to really just continue to elevate. Um, and really to make up for last year because I did like. You know, it's like I said, take that time off. I want to keep putting it in their face this year. Like, so I'm, it's just being consistent and like just getting better with patience, you know, just remembering that it's God's time and like, and just to keep grinding, really. That's it. Just keep your, getting bigger and better. What's your ultimate motivation? My family. What's, I'm very family oriented. So my, my folks, yeah, my folks, okay. my folks. What's, um, What's speaking into existence? What's one thing that you can hope that you can achieve by this year? By this year, um, 
man to pop to really like take off you been on the radio yet uh no but it's coming soon oh okay. wait wait well my song it's been in like a little mix show but it ain't been like oh a premiere type of your deal but it's coming it's coming that's something i'm working on too so okay. in the next couple months it'll be there for sure okay um what's your dream feature my dream feature la dirk what dirk yes i love dirk i fuck with dirk too um i, I hey look i i i I was I don't know why I was thinking of uh you was gonna say like Beyonce or something, but I wasn't I Dirk wasn't across uh Dirk is first off Dirk is fire, but I just Dirk was not the first name I was thinking of with you <laughs> Drake. I, I don't know why that I don't know why it seemed like you said um young jock or something to me, but as if I don't got Dirk all on my phone, but it just it just didn't register. I I can see Dirk. Dirk is Dirk is popping. Dirk would be a I good love one. Dirk. Um, I love Dirk. He's my favorite right now, so I gotta give it the dirt. I got you. Um, CMG, you know, come holla at it. So, uh, any uh, final words or so before we go? I want to thank you for having me here. I want to thank everybody for listening and tapping in. Make sure that everybody goes to check out my new single on May the sixteenth. High class It's gonna be available on all platforms. The video is gonna be on YouTube as well. So make sure y'all come check it out. Come tap in with me on Instagram at Triple Play Squeak. Uh, follow me on Spotify, follow me on YouTube, all that good stuff. Triple play is one word, and then it squeak is. is spaced out. All right, it's an S U U E E K. No, exactly. A. Now, that one I did get right off rip because I forgot it was even an A in squeak, so <laughs> I was so don't judge me. Um, but make sure y'all check out high class coming out May 16th, and if not, weak ass bitch on Apple and all these other places or WAB if y'all want to. Um, period with the T after the D. Um, we appreciate you coming on with us today. This has been another episode of, uh, damn, I was about to call it the great show. I'm calling it the wrong thing. This has been another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast. Uh, make sure y'all look out for her because she's the next to blow. We'll holler at y'all later. Peace. Back in this bitch, uh, know we full attack in this shit, uh, you know the full Mac came equipped, uh.